Welcome to Master the Game. I am Juice, and uh, I'm just going to let Bill take over and uh, do his thing. So take it away, Bill. Hey there, YouTube. Uh, Bill with Roll Stats um, here on the Master the Game channel, the uh, greatest YouTube channel, uh, you know, on the internet known to man. Um, to play some B2, keep on the Borderlands, why don't we kick it off like we did last week? And just in case, you know, anyone is tuning in for the first time, we'll sort of give uh, introductions and that sort of thing. So why don't we start with you, Juice? Uh, so I am Juice. Uh, this is my YouTube channel. Uh, we do all sorts of stuff here. We've got four games this week. We've got Beck Me. We've got some Pathfinder 2nd Edition on Friday. We've got Pulp Cthulhu uh, character creation on Thursday evening. And then Saturday, we have some D&D &D 5e. Uh, we have mini painting tomorrow night. And uh, yeah, so we do all sorts of stuff. I have videos coming up. Uh, and in this game, this Beck Me Keep on the Borderlands game, I am playing uh, Sloppy Sherman Woods. He is chaotic. He's a fighter Slappy. with long, beautiful black hair. Uh, he loves his cloak that he likes to kind of put up, pull up over his head and and linger in the shadows. Uh, and he is just a, a perfect character. You couldn't ask for a more uh, optimized character for Beckme. And uh, he will never die. <laughs> that was uh... how many how many hit points do you have again? <clears throat> A strong two hit points. Very strong, though. They're they're the best hit points. That that was a, that was a heck of an info, the intro juice. That was those great. So um, now, for the more honest part of the stream, uh, you know, let's kick it over to your better half. And uh, Paula, why don't you talk about Astra a little bit? Um, so I am Paula. I am on here on. Keep on the Borderlands um, and mini painting and other miscellaneous games um, during the week. And um, tonight I am playing Astrid. Um, she is your friendly neighborhood cleric. Um, she is, you know, she's excited for a little bit of adventure, but, you know, also interested in, in, bringing peace to the world. So, um, she, uh, I don't know. She's just, she really is truly the all around old school style cleric. Nice. Uh, that is what the world needs more old school style, um, anything. So, uh, <laughs> uh with that, let's kick it over to, um, Draven Swiftbow to Dave, who has, also the best YouTube channel on uh, known to mankind in the interwebs. Um, if you're mine. gonna, if, if you should definitely like and subscribe uh, to master the game, but you should then head over, well, after this game is done, head over to Draven Swiftbow's channel and uh, like and subscribe to that one. Dave, what do you wanna tell us a bit about um, Emerald and you? Sure, uh, well, thanks for the shameless plug. I do appreciate that. Um, yeah, so my name is Dave. I have the YouTube channel, Draven Swiftbow. I talk about D&D through various editions, Pathfinder, Cthulhu, Call of Cthulhu, the Alien RPG, a lot of stuff <laughs> right now. Um, and uh, I'm playing Emerald. I am an elf uh, with more human-like characteristics in terms of um, like curiosity and uh, accumulation of wealth sort of thing. Uh, right now, I am just desperately trying to hide my pointed ears because apparently people don't like me here. So <laughs> We like you. They just stick out. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. It's completely fine. Um, everybody, Everybody's going to end up loving Emerald uh, eventually. So, yeah. <laughs> With that, let's kick it over to the other best channel on YouTube, um, BN Drake, uh, he, he really does have, so here's the thing, right? Like not only does BN Drake have a much better YouTube channel than mine, uh, his, his DM skills are much better than mine as well. You really should go watch some of his live play. It's phenomenal. I watched some stars without number and I never even played that game. And I just want to play it from watching his live plays. So you should head over there and like, and subscribe after you like and subscribe here and like and subscribe on Dragon Smith Post channel, then go like and subscribe there. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about LBJ and yourself there, Drake? Well, 
I appreciate that, Bill. I don't know if that will help you survive character creation on Thursday, but <laughs> uh, I am playing LBJ. Uh, we've arrived at this wonderful town. It's been awesome. Uh, you can drink from the fountains. People just leave food out for you to eat. It's uh, I got a brand new sword. So this is great. I mean, it's uh, better than where I was. So I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. Uh, and again, I am uh, Bill with Roll Stats, but you do really don't want to go like and subscribe to my channel because it's, it's kind of non-existent. It's been defunct for a while. But at some point, I'm going to find the time to not work 16 to 18 hours a day, and I'm going to put something up on there. We'll just see when that is. Until then, I'm happy to just be running this game here. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and kick off session two of B2 Keep on the Borderlands. Um, we're going to kick off this session with Cornelius Goswin, the uh, the gatekeeper from Griffin's Rest. He's sitting silently at the bar uh, of the dimly lit bloody anvil. A tattered parchment spread before him. He contemplates his ale dips the tip of his quill into the tin ink pot next to it and begins writing. My dearest Margaret, I can't believe it's been three months since I last saw your beautiful smile. Three long months since I felt your loving embrace. And while I'm glad we were able to get you out, glad that you're safe and sound and far away from this hell, I feel your absence and it makes me ache inside. I miss you, lovey, I miss you. I have news. We have supplies. A caravan was finally able to run the blockade. The first group to make it through. They lost a wagon or two and more than a few good men, may St. Cuthbert guide their souls, but they made it. And with the food, don't worry, I managed to sneak a few casks. <clears throat> I managed to sneak a few cask crates and sacks for the locals too, just like I promised you. They'll have food for at least a month and maybe, just maybe, they won't need to wait that long. This caravan, this group that made it through, they're an odd bunch for sure. But by the cudgel, I think they may be the answer to our prayers. They ran the blockade and survived. The first caravan of the last six to actually make it. No small feat for sure. So I approached them to see if they could get to the bottom of these bandit attacks and rumors of savage beasts along the eastern road. And they agreed. Well, they agreed to hire on for payment. But I don't blame them. I would have paid them any price they asked on the spot if I'd had it. So I told him to speak with the Castellan. That Ponzi blowhard can open the coffers for this lot of cutters. There is something about him. One is an honest to Cuthbert elf. Can you believe it? A real life child of Damarung here in the East Vice. He's a quiet fella, goes by the name Emerald, bigger, bulkier than you would think for an elf. Maybe that's why he accompanies men. He seemed completely unaware of the reaction he might get, especially now with the rumors of magical beasts afoot, so I warned him about keeping his hood up. He took it well enough, good fellow that one, even if he is a little weird looking. The thing is, you would think that an elf would be the oddest member of the group, but no. The two men are also a curious pair. One of them, the one with long black hair, Sherman he calls himself, but I wouldn't be surprised if, wouldn't be surprised if that was a lie, is clearly the murk of the group. Shrewd as the day is long, he cuts a hard bargain, but I can respect that. And I suspect he cares more for the well-being of his camp companions than he lets on. He lets the others do most of the talking and negotiating and such, but I'll bet my britches that he's pulling the strings behind closed doors. And the other fella, LBJ, the really tall one, well... Remember the little Simpkins boy, the one who was kicked in the head by that mule? He's kind of like that, a little soft in the head if you catch my drift. He's partial to drinking, but I can't tell if it's the ale that makes him act so oddly or if he's a few arrows short of a quiver. Either way, he seems harmless enough, even if he does have sticky fingers from time to time. Meh, cutters, what are you going to do? And finally, there's Astrid Thaddeus. For the life of me, I can't figure out why she's cast her life with this bunch, but I'm thankful she has. She's clearly a woman of the cloth, not a follower of St. Cuthbert. I don't recognize the burnished sun she wears on her vestments, but she seems pure of heart nonetheless. If our fate lies with this group, I'm glad she's among them. Unlike that traveling priest who's caught Melchior's ear lately, that pompous Caleb Hahn with his condescending air and honeyed words, she seems to actually want to help and not simply line her pockets. Oh, Margaret, dare I say that I have hope. For the first time, I have hope. I feel it, a thing with feathers that perches in my soul and sings a tune without words. 
all may not be lost. Be, my, be well, my love. Stay safe. And by the will of the cudgel, this group could bring calm and peace and prosperity back to Griffin's Rest. And with that, we cut to the courtyard of Griffin's Rest, where the gong is clanging and Dodd lies dying at the gate, uh, spitting up blood on Astrid's pure vestments as she is casting a prayer over his body. <clears throat> what do you guys want to do? We got a lot of go-getters here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, sorry. So who's spitting blood up right now? So Dodd. Um, so where, when we last left, so now I'll give you a quick recap since clearly nobody remembers I don't remember. last. Yeah, right. <laughs> when, we la when we last left, you guys had just left um, Father Han's uh, quarters, his private apartment. And... Uh, the gong started clanging out in the courtyard. They opened the they they the the guardsmen opened the gate, and it was Dodd who had made it essentially half crawled, half half basically half dead, um, dropped at the you know the foot of the gate. Astrid went over to say a prayer over his body, and as she did, he so he basically opened up his eyes and it, with his dying breath told her it wasn't men and then spit blood uh, all over her. You, you can see he's he's missing a limb. He's missing his left leg. You can see that the his chest is caved in, um, yeah, oddly shapen. Uh, it, it, it looks like he's been, it looks like he was run over by a wagon, essentially. And Dodd was the person we were originally with. Dodd was your trip. Dodd was your, Dodd was your trail boss, um, but he was not the original trail boss. Right. He was he was elected along gotcha. the road because your original trail boss had actually died. Right, and we told him not to yeah. leave, but he was dumb. Yeah, we, we we warned him that it was a bad idea. Yeah, but he wouldn't yeah. listen. Dodd, we told you, man. <laughs> Astrid, what did he say? Um, Astrid uh, finishes up her prayer and then looks up at uh, Sherman and says, he said that it wasn't men who attacked him. So is this the thing that we were just told about in the tavern too? The two men at arms who are standing by, who, who essentially opened the gate, uh, are looking back and forth at each other. They're looking down at Dodd and the damage that was done to him. And the the one of the men at arms says, "I I told you, I told, I told you, it, it can't be men. There are foul beasts afoot." You guys, I think there's more going on here than just some bandits. Well, that's that's what the the. Uh... Cornelius had told us. Right, he, he thought they were monsters of some sort. Yeah, I'm starting to think he could be right. I mean, this is... He's in terrible shape. There's nothing I can do to help him. Aren't you a person of the cloth? Of course you can do something to help him. Light your hands up and do that thing. I've heard about your type. Not at first level. <laughs> yeah, they can think it spells a second. This is Beck me. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I didn't Give say like I witnessed it. Levels. I said I've heard about your type. That's all. Could be rumors. No, uh, a crowd, a crowd begins to gather. So um, the the gong has stopped clanging. And the the townsfolk, whenever the gong clangs, they go into the courtyard over by the bloody anvil um, to sort of huddle together for protection. It's the most protected portion of Griffin's Rest of the keep. But when the when the gong stops clanging, they begin to make their way out, and a crowd begins to gather, and you can hear murmuring, um, you know, amongst themselves behind you. There's there's a crowd of a, of at least fifteen to twenty people now, sort of standing around looking at um at dodd's broken body um and as they as they uh 
you know, as the murmuring starts, Kay, who is the uh, the, the the barmaid at um, at the Bloody Anvil, rushes forward and says, "What's wrong with you people? What's wrong? Stop gawking! Stop gawking!" And she um, she she goes to to basically cover up. She takes her apron off and covers up uh, Dodd's body. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I, I really don't know what to do. I feel so bad that he went out there alone. Why would you feel bad? We warned him. It's his own fault. I mean, what else could you have done other than take him prisoner and hold him against, you know, his own will? I mean, I'm not saying I should have done anything different. Then what's you to know? feel bad about? I don't, I don't know. Well, it's just so conscience. unfortunate. He he was so helpful in getting us to this point. I mean, yes, but weren't we the helpful ones? We helped him get to this point too. But were you? <laughs> uh yeah, I definitely handled my own. According to the backstory, we were very helpful. Yeah. <laughs> we're the first ones that got got anybody through to this point. You're welcome. By the way, I don't think you could have done it without me. And I believe it's um, evening, correct? Yes, it is. Okay. I, be I believe you guys were planning you were going to head over either to the provisioner or to the blacksmith, or you you were basically looking at uh, stocking up on some supplies. Yeah. I, th I thought it was more. I thought it was morning because we slept in them, met with uh, the priest in after that oh you're practice. right it is yeah. morning yeah right right uh because you met with the priest oh, that, right and that, then we were gonna go okay that morning and you drew yeah, yeah you're absolutely correct dude. but yeah i would like to see the armor see if i can improve uh my armor my chain mail sure yeah i mean i guess let's get our gear and get out of here so um hold on one second sorry uh, so the armor is actually right there. It's sort of the building with these the crenellations on the roof. It's a uh, it's it's a stone building, almost the same stone as uh, that is that the outside walls are made of. Um, that building is right there. There's also a a provision. So there's a common stable. The common stable and the warehouse are on the other side of that building, and then across from it, um, there a, there is. A, what looks like a provisioner um, and you can tell a there's a sign up um, but B you can see sort of uh, a bunch of goods out front of of the building so okay yeah no I'd like to visit the armor and see uh, see what he has you know okay. I'll actually go with him too okay so uh, bu -bu -bu. So you head on over uh, the 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 door. It, it's like double doors. Like think of it as barn doors, but they're very heavy, heavy oak wood. Um, but they're they're slung open inside. You don't see anyone, but you can hear in the back corner. The building itself is about. Uh, it's, the building itself is about. 20 by, or I'm sorry, um, 30 by 30 square in the back corner, sort of the northwest corner of the building. You, you hear some clanging and you can see sparks coming up over uh, a, a stack of what look, appears to be cordwood. So as we um, <clears throat> enter, I mean, is there anybody standing directly in front of us or no? The, the, the place seems completely empty. Um, other than, well, there's the place is empty of people. All you can hear is sort of this sound coming from the northeast corner, which is you can you can recognize it as a hammer banging an anvil, essentially. And you see the sparks coming up as it strikes over this stack of cordwood. I guess we'll make our way up there and see if we can talk to the smith. Sure. So um, you come around the corner and you see uh, a big burly man, um, mid to late 30s, uh, wearing essentially, uh, he's wearing 
pants, um, but no, he, he has no shirt on, um, quite, quite sweaty, uh, and he's banging away at a, a chunk of, of metal, and sparks are, are flying. He, com he seems to completely, he either is unaware of your presence or is completely ignoring you because he just continues to bang away on this piece of metal. Astrid will use her best um, teacher parent projecting voice and <laughs> say, uh, "Good morning, sir." Uh, and he, there's just a conti he continues to 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 bang to he continues to bang away at this this piece of metal. Um, I'll start to kind of wave my my arms around trying to get his attention um, while also, you know, sort of looking back at Emeril, like what, what's up with this guy? Like <laughs> clearly not paying attention. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, so I'm just going to walk up behind him and tap him on the shoulder. Okay. So and when you tap him on the shoulder, he jumps. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's obvious that he was completely unaware of your presence. He jumps and whips around hammer in, uh, hammer in hand, but sees you and, and, uh, and immediately lowers the hammer and then pulls what it looks like two pieces of cork from, from his ears. And he's like, Oi, sorry about that. Uh, I, the the hammering it it, it it hurts my ears and um he's he's yelling uh and not yelling angrily uh it just appears that he has uh he probably has suffered some hearing damage over the years um from banging on metal what can i do for you lot uh we were here to check out some armor so, and I kind of like gesture towards my armor that I'm wearing because I'm not sure if he can hear me or not. So he says, garments? No, I can't help you. You're going to have to go to the provisioner for that. Oh. Okay. Uh, Emerald, what did, what did you want? Well, I want armor. He, he thinks you're talking about clothes. So I'm just going to grab like the chain mail and just sort of point to it and then oh. like, hold up some coins and like point to those and then point to him. Oh, armor. Why didn't you say so in the first place? And he, he points to the, so the wall behind him has, uh, it has racks that have a ton of weapons um, on the racks, but there are also some shelves where you can see that there are pieces of uh, of metal armor placed there. You can see some chain mail, um, sort of all neatly stacked and aligned. Okay, well, I'll, I'll check out the, the metal armor. Okay, uh, so hold on one second. What you would, we're gonna say that you are approximately i mean you are man sized right you're larger than a regular yeah i'm i'm he's basically like five and a half feet tall so he's okay so you you actually see a couple of sets of uh chain mail um that that would you estimate would probably work for you yeah that's what i already have though i was hoping for like bandit or something else okay so so what's better than bandit because Plate. I have Plate banded. Plate, Plate's Plate only mail. 60, too. Yeah. yeah. Plate. Gives you an armor class of three, which is good in this edition. So, unfortunately, oh. so unfortunately, there is no unfortunately there is no banded mail there is one set of plate um there are several sets of leather armor um unfortunately though you, you there are there is no there is no banded mail which one of us does it look like the plate would fit? So it it, well, it it looks like it would fit. It honestly, it looks like it would fit any of you, with the exception of LBJ, who is uh, probably way too too tall for it. So yeah, yeah. So I could. I mean, if if you were interested, Emerald, I'd be willing. I like. I'm willing to take the plate mail, and you could have my banded mail that I'm wearing right now. It doesn't, it's, it's not really banged up at all, hardly. 
I've and kept it in really good shape. And it's unisex, right? Like, so it, it wouldn't look weird on me. Oh no, a hundred percent. We don't, we don't have like uh, uh chest fitted armor where I come from. Oh man, are, we're not going to get into a whole Mandalorian discussion now, are we? Uh, like, <laughs> nope. Well, okay. not for not not for me. I've never seen it. Okay, okay. <gasps> we love the show. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, no, my uh, wife. My wife likes it. I I just haven't gotten around to it. Uh, yeah, no, I'll I'll take that. Beta male is still an improvement, so that's that's fine. All right. So, how much um, is the is the plate the mail? Oh, it's seventy-two gold. Mm, oh, so um. So, Are you short? so oh, Emerald, I, I'm, I'm absolutely, I, I'm absolutely positive. And here, just like sort of breaking the third wall, that's only a twenty percent increase, which is actually um, giving you a hell of a deal. And you're only getting that because uh, you're the one of the heroes of Griffin's Rest. This this place is locked down. They're not getting anything in, and nothing's going out. Uh, you know, you're looking at fifty percent inflation, sixty percent inflation, seventy percent inflation. Twenty percent above list is a hell of a price. Yeah. So, um, so I'm if, a, if you're short, I can contribute towards that, and that's just me paying you for the the banded mail. Okay. All right. Cool. So I have. Um, exactly 68 gold pieces because that's what we were just given. Okay. Uh, so that's exactly what I have. All right. I, I, I'll give, I'll pay 30 towards it. Um, if only somebody negotiated a little bit more money, right? <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm feeling pretty happy with that. I mean, mm-hmm. so, um, so the the blacksmith essentially the armorer says uh so 72 gold um i uh take some of the the gold pieces that emerald gave me and i i put them with my own and i um hand it over to him uh so he kind of wipes his hands uh uh we're all covered in uh, grease and sweat. He takes the he takes the gold and he puts his he puts his hand out and he says, "Frederick Gullscream, great to meet you." Um, I shake his hand, say, you, "A Mastred," and I, you, I yell it really loud. If you be needing anything else, Mastiff. You come back and find me. I'm just gonna give him a big thumbs up. <laughs> okay. Uh, he he looks over at you, Emerald, and says, "Will you be needing anything?" Uh, well, yeah. Since I'm getting the banded armor from from her, um, would he be interested in buying my chainmail? So, uh, I, so he says. Yeah, I, I'd be I'd be happy to 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 buy that off you. Nothing, you know, we don't have much coming in and out. All right, yeah, I'll I'll sell it to him. How much is he willing to pay? Oh, uh, hold on, I will tell you in one second. He is willing to give you. He is willing to give you fifty gold. Is five zero or one five? Five zero. Okay, it's listed in the book as forty, so I'll, I'll take that. Yep. Um, so he counts. He takes his pile, uh, you know, of, of cash that you just handed him, and he counts back out fifty gold, and he hands it to you. Okay. I uh, thank him for uh, thank him for his time, and I guess we'll be on. Thanks. Our way. Friedrich Gullscream, what's your name? Oh, my name is Emerald. I, I can't really yell, though. It's <laughs> both well, as a player and as a character. Well, thanks, several. <laughs> if you need anything else, come back and see me. I'll be sure to. <laughs> as we're walking out the door, I'm going to give him two big thumbs up. 
and he gives you a thumbs up as well and goes back to banging on uh it goes back to banging on the his anvil what do you guys want to do now so when the rest of them that were in there uh lbj is going to wait for the uh, people to come take uh, poor dodd's body okay uh so the the men at arms when k was you know when Kay sort of shamed everyone and said what are you gawking at the men at arms actually um you, you know were discussing what they were going to do with the body and where they were going to uh to take him so um it's it, so what you were able to deduce by standing there is that they're they're going to take his body into the inner bailey okay but there's enough of enough of them to carry him Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, that what they're waiting for now. They're waiting for uh, the stable boy essentially to ready a wagon, and they're going to put him, you know, put him on a wagon, and then take him into the inner bailey until he can get a proper burial. So, okay. uh, I'm actually shocked that LVJ LVJ was not going to loot the corpse, but um, you know. <laughs> Surprises, surprises uh, are a good thing. So he lost his appetite, you know. (laughs) Well, yeah, he's still drinking from his tankard of many things. So that's uh, true (laughs) of many brews. (laughs) Um, Okay, what do you guys want to do now? Uh, I would probably ask the group. uh, So who who are we going to go go talk to? Uh, Like, what's the plan going into this? Or we already did the talk, didn't we? Yeah, we're going to go track. You actually, you we actually to go track yeah, them down. You actually already signed yeah. a contract, right? Uh, so right. 350 gold for information, 15 gold pieces per nose. Okay. And then did we get the information roughly of where they thought the bandit camp was? They just said to follow the, the you know, it's the e- the Eastern road. Yeah. Okay. So we need to go East. So the, do you guys want to just do that now? I don't see why not. Is there anything yeah. else you wanted to pick up? Um, so. We've got torches. We've got rope. We, I mean, I have torches. I do not have rope. Does somebody have rope? I have rope. Okay. I have rope. We're good there then. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We've got rations for the road. We've got our water skins full. Ammo. Uh, so there is if there is a provisioner and a trader if you guys wanted to you know if you wanted to pick up anything else i think i'm good i mean i feel like because he mentioned it we're supposed to go there and no, we missed something no, no. he's I, giving us a chance nothing. to get any last second things i right i'm just making sure that you're <laughs> a I bag of flour you. like i could meta and be like we need a bag of flour we you would be mirror. like i guess what i'm saying is you would be aware you know in your surroundings that there is a provisioner and a trader so i don't want right. you to think that you're only stuck with an armor that's all i would i'm not I am oh, okay not suggesting that you need to go to the provisioner or trader. hey and what's wrong with starting with a mirror and a bag of flour like some of us are on a budget okay (laughs) can i remind you um i'm gonna go back uh, to the bloody anvil and see if i can get my wine skin filled up (laughs) (laughs) so so lbj trots back to the uh to the to the bloody anvil and as you enter um you know bertram is there and he's 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 just shaking his head at you. Uh, he's he's just shaking his head at you, and he's he goes up. Uh, he grabs several drinks off of the bar and uh, pours them into your tankard. <clears throat> Much appreciated. <laughs> and um, I, I take out a, a, a gold piece and put it on the counter. And and Bertram grabs it. Uh, Bertram grabs it right away, and he gives you the thumbs up. He, uh, I think he's, I think he's quite used to you at this point. So yeah. Um. Okay. No. Never mind. Sorry. Okay. Well. Uh, what What do you guys want to do? I I think so. Sherman is not a patient guy. He's probably like itching to get out the gates. Uh, and so every chance he gets, he's like, okay, so you guys ready? You got everything? And like, then they're like, oh, we're going to go to the armor. And I'm like, oh, okay, great. 
And then when they come back, I'm like, okay, so are we ready? And then they're like, well, we might want to stop at the provisioner. <laughs> Look, we're ready to go when we're ready to go. Sometimes you just can't rush things. I would also, I would argue that a bag of flour is a great combat item. Uh, if somebody is, invi- if somebody's invisible, right? If you suspect that there's, oh, I, I a bag of flour is great. So yeah. I was, right. me- I said I could meta and bring a bag of flour. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. I guess let us embark on our journey. So you had, um, so you head up to the gate, the, uh, you know, the, the main gate. And as you approach, uh, the, the men at arms look at you and they sort of, they salute you, uh, as, as you approach and they open up the gate, open the gate. And the, the, the portcullis clangs up the gate, the drawbridge, um, slams down and it echoes, uh, you know it, the 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 slamming of the the drawbridge echoes across the entire courtyard and you can see uh that the people have come back again there's sort of a crowd of 15 or 20 people and um they're not really saying anything they're just kind of uh silently um seeing you off and as the the two men at arms on either side of the gate salute you the whole uh the whole um, crowd that is there begins to uh, begins to applaud and say Cuthbert speed and Cuthbert be with you and um, they, they they are they're cheering you on as you as you exit the gate well that's well deserved so we'll we'll I'll soak in the <laughs> adulation oh yeah I would totally <laughs> soak it up and like bow and you know hold hold my uh my bow up, you know, like acknowledging <laughs> and, their applause. And as you do, as you raise, as you raise your bow and Emerald, as you bow, like there, there's a roar in the crowd. Like they, they're just, they, they, they absolutely love it. So. I'll like rip the tabard off of my, uh, off my armor. <laughs> Got some Hulk Hogan stuff. Going yeah. on. <laughs> uh, I instantly regretted saying that, but anyway. <laughs> uh and then as you head out across the bridge, um, you, you cross the bridge and you can still hear sort of the, uh, the echoing of the, the crowd cheering you. You also hear uh, forebodingly the, uh, the, the chains begin to clink and the, uh, the drawbridge goes up and bangs and then you can hear nothing. Uh, you're just sort of left with the sounds of, of, of the wind and, and silence. So do we think that we should just follow the path or are we looking for something in particular? I mean, they, I assume they've been ambushing people on the, on the path. So So the path, the path itself, uh, you know, from the keep runs about, it runs about 60 yards down um so the keep is on this sort of plateau and the path is a winding path that runs south um about 60 yards to where the main road is that then branches off you can either go west or east uh west being back the way that you came but this is the the main road the main caravan route all right i guess we're trudging along so um, you come again about sixty yards south along this path, and then you reach the main road. It branches east or west, and directly in front of you. So running, running from east to west along the road, about ten yards off of the road is uh, uh, a river. It's about fifteen to twenty yards wide. Um, you know, in, in most places, it's, it's a fast running river, uh, and it's running from, uh, east to west. So do we have to go over it to get across the road? 
No, I'm just telling oh, you okay. what you see. So directly ahead of you is a river. The road branches, think of it as left or right. It's east or west. So then, uh, you know, on the other side of that road, the road follows this river, this, this oh, okay. falling river. Yeah. We, we'll go east. Okay. Yeah. Should we follow along the road, though, or should we follow along the river? My only I mean, hesitation to follow along the road is that if they have been ambushing people, I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't really want to be ambushed. But aren't we supposed to find them? I mean, if we're on the road, it guarantees we find them. If we go along the river, there's no guarantee we find them. Yeah, but maybe we'll like come up behind them or something. Or stumble into their full camp. I mean, okay, we can just go along the road. I was just trying to offer, I mean, you know, alternative Emerald, suggestions. Emerald thinks their camp's on the river. I'm fine with checking that out. I'm good either way. I like Emerald's plan of going along the river. What? <laughs> I say as I look past Astrid uh, directly at Emerald. I'll just shrug my shoulders because I was actually trying to advocate for the road, but that's okay. <laughs> um, all right, so what do you guys do? LBJ, you want to go along the river too? Just like Emerald was saying? Yeah, it's fine. About half out of my wine skin. We can't go too far. <laughs> yeah, just just stay on the opposite side of us of the water, so you don't fall in. Water's there might wet. Be... <laughs> I know that. <laughs> I just don't want you to fall in over there. I'll have to send oh. Emerald in for you. So you guys, so essentially you come off the road about 20 yards and it's a sort of an embankment that comes down to where the, the river is. Uh, again, the river is about 20 yards wide. It is fast flowing um, and it is flowing from uh, east to west. So you're sort of traveling upstream um, as opposed to, you know, downstream. You, you travel east for around it looks like a hundred yards or so. Um, and then the river starts to, uh, it starts to branch out a little bit south. Um, so further away from the road and, uh, the ground starts to get, it, the ground is soft. Um, you start to see some fens. Uh, it's, it, it's turning a, a bit swampy. You're also out of sight. You're also out of sight of the keep. Now you're really only, a couple hundred yards away from the keep, but because you came off the road and down this sort of embankment, you can't see over the the you can't see over the embankment to the top of the keep. So, uh, you said it's kind of swampy. Do we see any? It's getting like, footprints it's getting, or anything. It's getting a bit swampy. Um, the the ground is soft. And, uh, you know, you're seeing sort of uh, fens popping up now and again. Uh, you don't really see, you don't see any footprints, although you probably wouldn't see um, footprints unless they were, you know, really fresh. Uh, you're, you're not seeing, you're not seeing any, uh, any footprints at this point. But the ground, again, is really soft. So what I mean is, mm -hmm. unless they were really fresh, it's it's basically just gonna all level out. It's just it, it's, all mud. It's, yeah, it's very mucky mud. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Can we see the road from here, or are we starting to really veer away from where the road was? You can't. So you can't. I mean, you know where the road is because it's essentially the top of the embankment, but you can't see. Uh, you're down about 20, 25 feet. This embankment comes down to the river, so you can't see the 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 road bed. No. Mm -mm. Astrid, this was a terrible idea. Well, how did you come up I with this? I thought it was Emerald's idea. I what? believe that well, was yeah, what I'm trying to said. blame him. He clearly wanted to go on the road. You wanted to come down here. Now we're about to get all muddy and slipping and sliding. What's going on? Oh, are you scared? No, the mud, I think the dirt. I just think you're terrible at strategy. That's all. 
Well, I mean, we can go back up to the road. Now you want to do what I said. Let's go back to the road then. Fine. We'll just get ambushed. It's no big deal. I'm not worried about it. So because are I you... have more than two hit points. <laughs> <laughs> what are these hit points you speak of? <laughs> Is this like a new game? Like every time I hit something, like on the way to the keep, you know, I get a point or something? I mean, I don't think you'd have any points if that's how it worked. Oh, all right. We'll see. So all right. are you so are you heading back north up to the road or are you staying? Uh, are you we, sort of skirting the river still? We should keep going this way, you know, just to see your plan out. All right. But I warned you. <laughs> so you continue on sort of skirting the river. The river takes a sharp turn north back up towards the, the road. So it's sort of, it, it was following the road, took a dip south, and it, it comes back up north. You're now sort of in, it's, it's full on swamp. This is no longer considered like swampy ground. You are in a swamp. You're sinking down into the mud up to your ankles. Uh, and the, the, so you're really forced to go back up north towards the river, although just across the river, directly east of you, um, just across the river, there's a, it's like a mound of earth. It almost looks like, a, think of it as like a mesa, but it's not stone. It's actually a, like an earthen mesa uh, that clearly stands up above the rest of the swamp. It rises up about, uh, it rises up eight to 10 feet from the rest of the, that swampy ground. It's like high ground. Um, and on the top of it, you see uh, three, what appear to be uh, like, like, like tiki torches almost um that are stuck into uh the earth hmm. that's probably nothing that's, that's interesting that there are torches up natural there natural formation emerald yeah. what does that mean <laughs> Uh, and that's you said it's on the other side of the river. It is on the other side of the river. So the only way to get to it, uh, it would be to cross the river because the river goes up north again. But it's it's you know it's still on the other side of of the river. Uh, it's it's mm. essentially the only way. Even if you were to follow the river up north, you'd have to come south to get to the mound. You you would have to cross the river regardless to get to this uh, formation. Yeah. And then I'm glad just I just got, bought yeah. that plate mail. Yeah, I was going to say, there's two of you in plate, and I'm wearing heavy metal armor as well. Just beyond that mound, uh, you see what appears to be a thicket of pine trees, maybe 20, 30 yards south of that. How deep is this river? Uh, you don't know. <laughs> you have not investigated the river. Would you like to go investigate the river? Yeah, so I'm going to try and find, you know uh long like stick maybe some rocks you mean, like, you mean your trusty 10 foot pole that every osr gamer in the world buys yes <laughs> i'm gonna take my 10 foot pole and i'm gonna try and figure out you know about how deep the river seems to be so uh you approach the you know as you uh, approach the river the ground obviously gets more silty um there's actually like you can see there are kind of pools that that come off of it when you shove the you know when you push your 10 foot pole down into the river you're guesstimating it to be 16 inches deep 18 inches deep at this point uh it's so you're thinking maybe you know shin height knee height uh it's not super deep, but it is pretty fast moving. And here's the thing. When you go to push the stick down, you feel some resistance. You feel the bottom, but you can also tell that the bottom of the river is, is it's, it's silty. It's, it's definitely, it is not, it doesn't feel very solid. It feels, uh, it feels quite soft. So. Hey guys, it's only, it's only like a couple of feet deep. I'll stop measuring that from the river bank. I mean, 
yes, she's pushing you. Like I'm assuming that you're pushing the stick out towards sort of the center of. Uh, you yeah, know, as far as, as I can go. go, I'm. I mean, I'm assuming that I can't get to obviously the middle of the river from here, but I can at least, you know, check the the area directly in front of me. Yep. I mean, if we want to go over there, we could just like give it a shot with the river. I mean, or we could go back up to the road, too. So I'm assuming I kept walking, and I'm, like, a good 15 feet ahead of everyone who stopped. And okay. I turn around, and I'm like, why are you poking the river? Like, that's just a mound of dirt. Like, just, we have things we got to do. Look, this one time I took a pole vaulting class, and after it, I started carrying around a 10-foot pole. <laughs> Do you really have a 10 foot pole? Just, yeah. Oh, for sure I do. I've got a 10 You've foot pole. You've been going into like taverns and stuff with a 10 foot pole in your back. <laughs> it, it's old school D&D. You always have a 10 foot pole. You always just a 10 foot pole. You know what? Turn, she's knocking everyone's <laughs> drinks over on the table. I can tell you from experience and carrying around a seven foot metal pole that people actually don't question it as much as you would think. <laughs> <laughs> they literally yeah, just let it go. Strange. Like they look at you and they're like, "Oh, and they're like, okay. it's just, it's not worth it. Like, it's not worth <laughs> even asking." I'm just yeah, like, yeah, it's like not, you know, clearly <laughs> I don't care, and I'm just like walking along. So you know, fair, fair. Um, <laughs> that's all I gotta say about that. Why are you poking into the water? Like, come on, for real. I mean, do you want to go check out this this thing across the river, it's or what do you want to do? Okay. With, tor with torches sticking out of it. Yeah, I mean, it might yeah. have noses over there. <laughs> it's true. It might be a nose shrine. You think the thing that's been killing everybody off lives in that? Did you just say a nose shrine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get paid by the nose. I mean, yeah, the possibility. I mean, it's 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 a mm. thing that could happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what if I these mean, things don't have noses? Look, everything has a nose. Have you ever seen anything without a nose? An octopus. A pug. <laughs> <laughs> Friend Bobby had no nose. <laughs> no no. Yeah, fall off work. I love it. Okay. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> all right. Do you really so want to try with, to go across the, the we, river? I don't think I what? can make it. I'm just being real here. I mean, we can keep going forward if you want to. I'm just It's just saying. water. It's wet. <laughs> just so, jump so is that a yes or a no? <laughs> I mean, I'll try. <laughs> We're the most indecisive gaming group that ever did exist. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm used We're to I'm passive. used to DMing, so I always I always try to stick to like the background when I'm actually a player. I think I know. Um, I think I know now why the descent into a Vernus game has taken like twelve months. <laughs> to, yeah, right. <laughs> All right. You know what? Screw it. I'm just gonna start making my way across. He's just walking. In. Admiral wades right in. Good for you. Okay. Yeah. Hey, wait. You got a rope? Uh, yeah, I do. Well, hand me the other side. Yeah, I'll I'll toss the other. I'll toss the rope over. Okay. Uh, let me grab that. If, if you guys are going, I got to go too. So, <laughs> I grab like somewhere in between those two on the rope. So, uh, you you know, you you start to to wade across the the river and you can feel yourself specifically um those of you who are in heavy armor right you feel yourself sinking in and it it you're sinking in pretty deeply like if you were if you had to run at this point you feel like there's no way you would be able to you're you're having a hard time just pulling your feet um out of the muck and the the current is quite strong um However, you make it across, uh, you, you know, you make it across without issue. You're, 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 if you had to make it across quickly, though, I guess what I'm saying is you're, you're not going to have a good time of it, uh, is sort of duly noted in the back of your head. All right, guys. 
whatever happens, don't plan on running. We're, we're in this t- till the end. At this point. <laughs> Just run in any direction except back towards the river. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we'll meet up somewhere. Well, somewhere. Here's, but here's so here's the thing. So here's what you're faced with. Um, now that you've said this here, uh, Draven, right? So. The river, again, sort of has this natural bend. It comes up north, and then it comes back south again. The mound is kind of in the center of this. You're, you're, it, you're almost, it's like a peninsula to a, to a certain degree. So really the only direction for you to run that wouldn't be river would be south towards this thicket of uh, pine trees. I think that'll be my exit strategy, though. Okay. <laughs> so... Um, so you cross, it's, it's, it's swampy, swampy, it's still swampy area. Um, you're about 30 yards from the, you know, the, the mound where the, the three torches are. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll draw my bastard sword and just have it ready just in case. Okay. Uh, and I'll just make my way towards it. Okay. Uh, the rest of you are following? You reach the mound. Um, so, on all sides, with the exception of the sort of the southeastern side, it's pretty sheer. Um, again, six to eight feet uh, higher than the surrounding ground, and and kind of sheer, with the exception of this southeast corner where it appears that there's like a natural. Uh, it's almost like a ramp um, that would allow you that would allow you to walk up. So I will. Okay. Um, you walk up to the top. You know, you you reach the top of the mound. The mound is this mesa is is sort of semi uh, rect, rect well not rectangular because it's circular, but it it has almost like a like a twisted crescent moon shape, right? Um, and the 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 Torches themselves are on the far end of uh, of the mound, so you're on the you're really on the southeastern um, you're or I'm sorry the southwestern tip of the mound. Uh, it kind of dog legs, so think of it as like a golf green, right? It's sort of dog legs to the right, um, and uh, the torches are arranged in like a it, like a triangular shape. There are three um, to the to the uh, north east of it like the the widest area of the of the green we'll, we'll refer to it as the golf green so yeah uh yeah i'll guess i'll make my way towards the torches and just see if there's anything uh significant about it okay or anything there so uh as you approach the torches you can see that the torches are set up in this triangular like sort of uh uh shape there is a, a what appears to be a, a hole um in between these three triangles it looks sort of like a like a cave uh sort of like a cavern a cave but instead of stone it, it's it's dirt i think we need to go there i think somebody left these uh, torches for us but uh they missed one there should be four Uh, you can take a torch with you. I, I don't need it. What do you mean you don't need a torch? I, like I have the perfect amount here for the us three. <laughs> I have infravision, so I can I can actually see in the dark. That's impressive. <laughs> that sounds fancy. <laughs> so as you guys are having this discussion about infravision, um, you and Emerald, you see it first. Uh, this massive, uh, muscular, like scaled beast with the head of, uh, with the head of, of, of like a lizard, um, with gnashing, gnashing teeth and glowing yellow eyes, uh, emerges quickly behind him, um, two more, uh, come out and you can see one still uh one still 
coming up. In other words, three have popped up out of this hole in the time that you guys have been having this conversation. And you see there's another one that is coming to emerge as well. Uh, they are they sort of click and hiss at the same time time uh it's it's a weird language that you've never uh that, that you've never heard and quite frankly you've never seen anything like this they move uh they move eerily fast uh as if um really uh, faster than you would think that any creature should move um they they're, they're that quick uh and at this point I'm going to ask everyone to roll initiative. So here's what happened. Um, just so you know, they actually got a surprise round on you in 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 back me right. The DM rolls for surprise, um, so you don't you don't roll for surprise. I roll for both you and I roll for the monsters. They actually got surprise, but I have adjudicated that they were not able to move to emerge and attack at the same time. This is why um, three of them were able to emerge uh, because basically their surprise round while you guys were arguing over improvision was uh, to emerge from this particular cave. So now we have a decision to make as a group because I don't want to make this decision for you, right? Um, so we're playing Beck me. We are not playing BX. If this were BX, right, you would declare your intentions. In other words, declare your actions. And the reason that I'm saying this is because this matters to spell casters. And we have two casters in this group, right? Um, there are two in Beck me though. Beck me, you know, sort of combines Moldve with Menser. Menser um, does not require you to declare actions, but there, he wants you to roll individually for initiative. And I'll make this clear in a second. But back me is essentially each side rolls for initiative, right? Or you can optionally roll um, initiative for each individual. The reason that this matters is if if we're doing sides, in other words, you know, once we one person rolls for initiative, I roll for monsters initiative. You have to declare your actions before initiative is rolled, right? The reason this is, is because if you get, you're a spellcaster and you get hit, your spell gets interrupted, burnt spell, right? So you have to declare what you're going to do before the dice are rolled. If, however, we're doing initiative per person, in other words, each person, you know, is rolling initiative and monsters are rolling initiatives, you don't have to declare your actions because, you know, the, you you could get hit and your spell could be interrupted before the, the round is over. Does that make sense? Am I explaining that correctly? Yeah, no, that sounds that sounds right. Um, I, I think I'm the only one that can actually cast a spell right now. Right. Um, but well, and I, here's what I, I'll give you my before you make your decision, and I'm not saying this uh, to to. I'll give you my preference, and I'll tell you why. Right? I actually prefer um, sides, not individual initiative rolls, because combat goes much faster. But that does mean that you have to declare before initiative is rolled. And here's the thing: in old school D and D, initiative is rolled every round, so you're not. It's not the same initiative order every time. It's not guaranteed. So at the top of every round, you're going to roll for initiative and we're going to see who goes first. So uh, what do you guys think? I don't care. It doesn't make it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> uh, let's do it. Let's go. Let's go by sides. Okay. So um, so then now I'm going to we are going to it's going to be our first initiative roll of the game. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> so, so who wants to roll it for us? Yeah, I was going to say. So traditionally, it would be the caller. We're not necessarily. Paula said she's ready. The caller. Um, so I would say whoever has the best X should probably be rolling your initiative, right? Because that's where the initiative modifier is. Mm, probably not it. I have a yeah, two. I got, I got a nine. So it's me. Or, uh, wait, I'm, how do you have two initiative? Two, two decks. Oh, plus, plus two. two. That's what he means. Yeah, I'm a sorry. 16. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's you. All right, sixteen. That's not possible. Initiative. You just roll d six. Initiative. Oh, a d six. A six sided oh. die. Yeah. Right. Oh, so that plus two is a big. Do I add the plus two to that then? <laughs> oh. Yeah, the plus, that's that's oh. huge. Yeah. Right. Oh, do you? What you is your? What them. is what is your dex? Sixteen. 
Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. my best stat. That's why I'm a bow bowman. That's first. why you're. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh. So, um. These these hideous, disgusting beasts um come emerging from the come emerging up from this hole, um, and they're actually surprised uh that you're there. In other words, they they had kind they came up, they weren't expecting to see uh they weren't expecting to see armor clad combatants. They were uh, they were essentially um hoping for a quick meal. And so they're a bit taken aback uh and and sort of um backstep a bit and so you get first action. Uh and and Dave since you didn't declare I'm I'm assuming you're not casting a spell. Uh, not this round, no. Oh, yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, what are what what are you guys doing? I'm gonna move up to attack with my uh, with my sword. So melee attack, though. Melee, yeah. Okay. Is anyone sh- is anyone doing a missile attack? Me. I, I would probably, uh, yeah. I would try to shoot my bow. So uh, it, it goes like ranged. So uh, it goes right. Actually, it goes movement. If you're movement, just mo- yeah. if you're just moving, movement goes first, then missile and magic, and then uh, melee. Right. So. Oh, okay. So if anyone is just moving, right, um, they would actually get to go first. Uh, if 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 anyone is doing a missile attack or a magic attack, they're going to go next. So that would be you, Juice. Unless LBJ, you're planning on uh, on just moving this round. Uh. Well, they've spotted us, so they no, have I'm, definitely I, spotted. You. Yeah, I'm definitely going to attack then. Okay. So, the, uh, Juice, that's you first. All right. So, a 14. And that is. Uh, Five. That is. Okay. Uh, yes. That is. That is. Uh, that is a hit. Uh, I don't add dex to my damage. So, it's just a four then. You don't add no dex is just right. to hit, it is not to damage, right. right? So then just a four. Okay. So you uh draw back your you draw back your bow and uh fire off an arrow that that actually catches uh that catches him square in the chest. This this any the the creature lets out this sort of snarly clicking hissing sound uh and and clearly sets its uh sights on you. I, I would yell out one point. <laughs> one hit point <laughs> and then um uh who wants to go next who i i guess, i'm assuming you're all in melee at this point i guess i was probably the closest since i was actually looking down the hole okay uh so i guess i'll go next sure, sure. okay uh all right so yeah i'm gonna use my bass sword two-handed okay uh let's see uh, so 17, so that hits armor class 2, uh, armor class either like 9 through 2. Yep. So that hopefully hits. It, it absolutely does. Okay. Um, was I able to get to the same one that got hit by the arrow? Uh, you you absolutely can, yeah. If you would like to attack the same one, you can. Yep. Yeah, I'll, I'll just try to interpose myself between uh, the creature and Sherman. Sure. And that is a D8 plus one, so that's four damage. So uh, you want to tell us what that looks like? You the 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 creature drops. Okay. Yeah. So I just basically charge at him, the bastard sword up over my shoulder, swing down, go from shoulder to hip, basically. And so as Emerald, uh, you as you guys are watching, Emerald brings his bastard sword down, and uh, this hideous beast sort of gets split almost in half black brackish blood that smells kind of like puke and piss uh spews forward and just sprays uh sprays the entire sprays the entire uh mound and that's uh that's going to either be you um that's going to be either you astrid or you lbj All right. Well, I will go. Um, So Astrid runs forward, um, kind of dodging the black spewing blood um, from one of these lizard creatures, brandishing her war hammer. Um, She lets out a cry as she tries to crush the the skull, but not the nose. 
love it <laughs> of of the next the next creature um and that's going to be a, a one i assume that hits a, a, a natural one you uh, no it. an armor class oh okay one. i was gonna I say no that natural one. <laughs> yes that that will and that absolutely hits yes yes um and that is a whopping seven points of damage tell us what that looks like um so as as astrid swings back um you know again trying to keep in mind the fact that we don't want to crush his nose too much her war hammer connects with its its neck and shoulder um region and smashes it to the ground nice uh as and she again she screams out that's five points. <laughs> and again, sort of bone matter and blackish, that black brackish blood just spews forth everywhere. Um, and that brings us to you, LBJ. Uh, there is now there is now one left standing, but you can see that there are others emerging from the hole. Uh, is there any way to to run and like try to bash him with my sword and knock him into the hole. Yeah, sure. You can try. Yeah. Okay. Just roll a regular attack then. Uh, yeah. Give me, give me a regular attack. And then if that's, if that connects, we'll figure out uh, what happens after that. Uh, 18. Okay. So that, um, that definitely is, uh, that definitely is a hit. Now what I want you to do is I want you to give me a roll under roll, uh, but it's not going to be on your strength. It's going to be on your decks. You're okay. looking for under, and this is going to be, you're basically 20. guiding your strike. Did you roll a 20? I mean a D20, right? Yes, on a D20, and you're going to look for under? Under 12, so I rolled a 10. Perfect. So, and the reason we're doing that, right, or the way that I'm adjudicating that is that you're using dex because you're going to, you're guiding your strike to be able to direct the, the, the body. So uh, tell us, well, first of all, give me some damage. Uh, I rolled a five damage. Okay. So uh, this creature screams out um, as you know as you, you bring your sword down on him, um, and then tell us what that looks like uh, after the after the attack. So I would I pull the sword and then kind of run and then like hit him like the flat of the blade, and like drive my good shoulder into him and knock him into the ones that are coming out of that hole. Nice. So he gets knocked back. Now what we're going to do also, so that is the end of your round. Um, it is now their turn, but uh, in back me, right? Uh, in back me in BX in, uh, in basic after the first death, uh, the dungeon master is basically going to do what's called a morale check, right? So you'll do a morale check or I'll do a morale check after the first kill um when more than half of the enemies are remaining if they if they or when more than half of their allies have been killed if they have two successful morale checks they will fight to the death if they fail at any time they may try to run away right and so since basically you took out three um i'm gonna do a morale check for them now and see uh and see what they would like to do and they are they are some steadfast uh, mama jamas, right? So they are, they are basically there. Um, you hear sort of this hissing and clicking that's coming down, uh, you know, from inside the the hole. When the creature that you um, knocked back into the hole, you hear this hissing and clicking erupt, and it sounds. Uh, you can't really tell if it's echoing, but it sounds like quite a few. Uh, so you're not quite sure how many uh, there are down there, but it, it sounds like quite a few. Uh, and so, there are uh, the 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 first two creatures that are coming up the hole are basically going to pull your creature um, back. In other words, the creature that you knocked down the hole. We're going to say. We're going to say that two make it out. 
So the first two that were coming get knocked back. They're basically losing their turn. The two that were behind them, though, um, were able to, to make it up through the hole. Those first two kind of pulled back the body. Uh, so two jump out. And Emerald, you are standing directly in front of the hole. And, we're yep. gonna say, and so really the only person, everyone is in melee range with the exception of Sherman, correct? Just so I have it straight in my head? Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay. That sounds right. So we're going to do this fairly. Okay. So, um, so the first one up out of the hole hisses and, and clicks in your direction, Emerald, and comes charging at you. Armor class four. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so he rolled an 18, which is definitely a hit. Oh, um, yeah. And he does two points of damage. So he comes charging forward at you. Uh, and sort of misjudges uh, the distance, goes to close and over closes on you and just sort of catches you with this long sort of four inch curved claw. This yellow claw catches you um, in the shoulder and rips through for two points of damage. And then... That's half the hit points. The second one comes, <laughs> the second one comes charging out uh, and sees you, Astrid, and makes a beeline directly for you. Also, um, with these claws, uh, uh, with the with their claws drawn. Um, what is your AC, Astrid? That would be a three. And so that's an eleven. So okay, so uh, he, so he, again, same thing. They charge out. They weren't expecting you to be so close. They were sort of expecting you to back away, and he oversteps. Um, and goes to 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 uh, swing at you, but goes wide and misses. Um, that is their turn. Well, two more come up behind them, so there are now four on the mound. Two of which were able to attack. Two of which um, have emerged from the hole. There are now four on the mound, uh, ready to attack. And, and now, now that the, the four are up there, do we still hear more clicking coming from the cave? You So you don't hear any clicking or hissing at this point. Um, other than, you know, the clicking and hissing that you hear these, uh, they're, they're essentially setting themselves and they're getting ready. Uh, we are now going to roll initiative. I'm going to ask that everyone declare once again because we, you know, we're it is the top of the round. We're gonna we're gonna roll again. Dave, if you're planning on casting yep. a spell, you have to declare. Yeah, so I'm gonna try to cast sleep this turn. Okay, and the way we sort of handle that narratively is that um, you know you guys look over and you see Emerald sort of. Uh, leafing through his uh, spell book with, you know, arcane magic arcing over it. And that's that's how you can sort of tell that he has declared it, that he's preparing. Um, Sherman, are you continuing with your missile attack? Yes. Keeping and my then, distance and shooting, uh, shooting him as I see him. Got it. And uh, Astrid and LBJ, uh, you, you are both uh, maintaining melee? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So who want, uh, is Sherman rolling initiative again? Oh, I, yeah, I could do that. Okay. Do or, it. All right. 19. So you, Oh, sorry, I did possible. it again. I did it again. <laughs> sorry, five. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. okay. It's, it's so, not natural to me. I'm sorry. I'll pick it up, I swear. So, uh, so you got, um, you know, as these, creatures were coming up out of the hole, uh, you have the upper hand of them. You can see, uh, you basically see them emerging. And so, uh, so Sherman, you get the first attack. All right. That 19 would have been great right now. <laughs> uh, that's not bad. Uh, that's a 15. So armor class four, I think that hits. Uh, yes, that hits. For two points. Okay. And is this on? Did were you striking? Uh, I'm shooting the, the one that was uh, that got Emerald pretty bad on his shoulder. Got it. Okay. And you did two points of damage. Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, so it, it takes the arrow. It it it. You can tell that it it 
hurt it. Um, it it strikes it strikes in the chest, and it you know the the creature itself is beginning to heave, and it's sort of dribbling blood a little bit, but it's still standing. Um, what I will say is, the three that the three that are that are unwounded, that the so the two that came out look bigger than um, the other creatures that had come out. They 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 look bigger, fiercer, and much more dangerous. So. Perfect. <laughs> uh, and so then that brings us to uh, to spell casting, and that that would be you, Dave. Okay. So I'm going to cast sleep. Okay. Uh, and I will just try to you know gauge the distance so that I'm not catching myself or any of the other. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. So basically, uh, creatures up to four plus one hit dice or less. Yep. Uh, generally, man sized are affected. Uh, so as the dungeon master, you roll 2d8, and that's yep. the total number of hit dice that are affected. Uh, no saving throw, and if they fall asleep, they can be killed with a single strike from an edged weapon. So I'm rolling for the hit dice? I, you can roll for the hit dice if you'd like. I don't, I mean, are I don't want sure? to take that away from you, yeah. Well, I don't want to metagame and know what they're doing. No, I agree, are. but and I would also say that we never played where the okay. one rolls for the hit dice, yeah, right. I don't like why would you want to take somebody's mold away? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, so five on the first eight and six on the so that's eleven hit dice total. Okay. So so sorry, I'm just looking at something really quick. I just I need to know if the plus one counts as an additional or not. So I just I'm gonna consult the rules really quick. Sorry. Yeah, no, no. Because it said they're 2D, you know, two hit dice plus one. And I just don't know yeah. if the modifier counts. I, I think it's just the, the, the hit dice number. Like it is just plus. it is just the hit dice number. You are correct. I'm sorry, I just I hit it's it's, it's hard yeah. to, it's hard to keep all the systems straight. So so um the four so you see Emerald uh sort of pouring over his his spell book. And uh, he starts chanting some arcane language that you can you really can't understand. And uh, this almost cloud begins to emanate, and it looks more like a sound cloud than actually a, a visible cloud. Um, it's kind of shimmering and makes the air shimmer. And the uh, these creatures sort of all slump down to their knees. You can see all four of them slump to their knees and you can clearly hear uh, heavy breathing and, and almost you swear it's snoring. Okay, and that last four, it's like quite a while actually. It is, I think- Six, up to 16 turns. Uh, it turns, yeah. Which, which is like 10 rounds per turn. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. Well, a, a turn is uh, 10 minutes, actually. So, yeah, it's a long, long, long time, right? Oh, right. The rounds, round, are, rounds are 10 round, seconds in this rounds, one. Yeah. Rounds are 10 seconds, turns are 10 minutes. So, yeah, right. right. I'm, I'm used to second edition. Yep, yep. Uh, so after they drop down, I just say, um, you know, slit the throats of the biggest ones first. <laughs> Okay. When you, he when he says that, um, <laughs> Astrid kind of looks at him sideways and looks over at LBJ and just kind of like backs up a little bit. I'm um, hacking. And, and <laughs> lets them through. Watching her reaction, I'd be like, "Well, I mean, you got to cut the throats before you cut the nose." I don't. I I don't own a knife I'll, I'll just point over to the side and say like look Astrid a distraction <laughs> I shall go examine the tiki torches <laughs> check to see if there's more so as, <laughs> I'm going to see if I can pull it out of the ground as, right, as Astrid walks over to check out the tiki torches um, you 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 just essentially you just hear sort of like blades slicing through flesh um and and spilling blood um onto the ground as as i'm sure astrid winces and and like hums to herself uh, <laughs> la, 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 i can't hear you um and the tiki torches are they're 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 basically uh it, it, there, there's nothing really spectacularly special about them other than they do have 
what appears to be uh, what appears to be trinkets, uh, for lack of a better word, bone trinkets. Um, you can't really tell what kind of animal it is because they're carved, but there are bone trinkets on each one of the the, the torches. Are they shaped like anything in particular? So they appear to have dragon-like or lizard-like heads. They appear to be uh, carved in 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 what you would what you would describe as a reptilian sort of head shape. Um, Astrid just kind of shrugs her shoulders and tries to pull it out of the ground. She's going to try and just take it with her and utilize the torch that is already available to me so I can save my own resources for later. Yep. And it's quite easy to pull from the ground. Again, like I said, the ground is, uh, the ground is, is quite soft. I'll uh, pull it out and uh, rejoin the group after all of the um, slashing has ceased so as you turn around, um, you see essentially, you know, dead, these dead beasts with their throats slit. Um, and, uh, and that's, I think, where we're going to take a, that's where we're going to take a break. All right. Perfect. We'll be back in five minutes.
Okay, so we are back, uh, and the, we're we're back, and the party just survived their first encounter. Is the encounter over? We don't know. Uh, as Astrid turns back uh, from investigating this torch, where she found um, this sort of carved trinket and pulled the torch from the ground, she sees uh, the rest of the party sort of standing over the uh, standing over these reptilian creatures. Uh, sawing through their their thick, scaly hide uh, and and removing uh, removing their head, their heads. So, uh, what do you guys want to do? Well, I just want to collect the noses, but yeah, we clearly need the noses. So yeah. there is really there's not really a nose, and I'm not saying this to be. I'm not trying to be pedantic here, right? But they have like almost a protruding snout. It's not, I wouldn't necessarily call it a nose. The thing is, um, the snout is, it, there's bone there, right? Um, their, their mouth sort of comes out. Think of it as like a dog, uh, as, a, as a dog snout with um, sharp teeth. You, I mean, I suppose you could. Like an alligator? Kind of, a, a sort of more like, uh, I, I I would describe it more sort of like a cross between a lizard and a dog. Um, and, and so you could cut sort of the tip of the nose off. Um, certainly if you wanted to, or, or you could, you know, essentially it's, it's your call at this point. Right. I don't want to get too gruesome. <laughs> we just need these maybe just collect, yeah, just collect, collect the heads for now. And for, <laughs> Maybe get the cleric to keep looking at the torches while we uh, try to break these snouts and cut them so, off. So, so at the uh, so w you know when you're when you're done, um, you're sort of standing there in the blood, the muck, and the mire. You have uh, you've collected six uh, six snouts or six noses at this point. You don't hear anything. Uh, you don't hear anything coming up from the hole. All seems quiet, actually pretty, uh, pretty eerily quiet. All you can hear is sort of the wind whistling through the pine trees um, to the south of you. Do we want to look down in the hole to see if maybe they had any um, accumulated treasure or things they may have taken off of their victims? Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Their real I noses mean might be down there. I think we should make sure that we cleared them all out. These could be what are attacking the travelers on the road. Yeah, that, that, so it's our civic duty. Yeah, it really is. I mean, See, our paths have crossed for this reason, you guys. They smell pretty bad. You think they're good eating? That's all you, <laughs> LBJ. I'm not I'm, touching that. I'm sure you've had worse. I mean, if you help me clear them out, I'll help you cook them. Oh, that sounds like a deal. So, um, so the you know you look to the hole. The hole is the hole is approximately you know. 24 to 26 inches across it is not um it, it's not you're certainly not going to be able to come out more than one at a time um and it's going to be hard going specifically for anyone who's wearing plate uh to, to kind of maneuver down there you're not sure you can see it goes can we down tell if it like opens up or is it all dark down there it's all dark it goes down about four feet you can see that it bottoms out after about four feet and then you know heads off in the uh westerly direction but you you have no idea if it you know widens up basically you're seeing down and the floor and then an opening to the west i'll, I'll stick my head in and see what i can see um so i can uh so again is someone i mean you could stick your head down but it, it drops down about four feet uh i unless somebody's really holding your legs i don't know that you're going to be able to get down far enough to be able to see it sort of goes down well, and then the opening to the west is the same it's it's almost like a think of it as a burrow it's I'll, not necessarily I'll hold, a you. Okay. I'll hold, hold you down there if you want to if you want to check it out and get a better read on it. 
Uh, yeah, I, that's that's fine by me. So uh, Astrid grabs Emerald's ankles, and uh, as as he attempts to to uh, sort of inch his way down, immediately Emerald, you're hit with just this nauseating smell of it's it's sort of rancid meat and and feces and it, it's just it's it's it it smells of a uh, dead animal and and a latrine is essentially um the smell that that you're that you're hit with as astrid begins to lower you down you can hear um you you begin to hear as you get closer to the hole you begin to hear a familiar clicking uh hissing sound but it sounds it appears to be it sounds to be echoing off of the burrow it doesn't sound uh it, it actually sounds pretty far away um it's it's more of a hushed clicking and hissing and it doesn't sound uh it doesn't sound aggressive uh, i guess it, it sounds um it's it's a much more soothing uh hissing and clicking it's a kinder gentler hissing and clicking huh and then uh, as you get finally get to the bottom where you're able to see under, you can see it is essentially a burrow. So 24 to 26 inches rough hewn. It looks like it was dug out. Um, it does widen up to the west. Your guess is, you know, you probably would have to crawl through this 24 to 26 inch burrow for about five feet. And then it does look like it opens up into a more natural uh chamber okay i'll uh i'll signal for astrid to pull me back up okay you, like, you wiggle your toes and <laughs> so astrid you feel uh you feel emerald um sort of shaking his feet you doing okay uh yeah just i, I try i'm not gonna yell or anything i'll just try to like <laughs> Whisper, you know, just pull me up. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, I'll grab his feet and uh, pull him backwards. Okay. So um, after some a little bit of struggling uh, and and a whole bunch of uh, heavy lifting, you get Emerald back, uh, and you're all on the you're all on the top of the mound. And once you're when you come out of the hole, when you bring your head out of the hole, Emerald, you no longer you don't hear that hissing or clicking it was very soft and faint you could only hear it when you were down there okay i'll i'll just relay that information uh to the group so they will be all know it's what i saw um and then just ask them what they want to do well so are we able to fit down there i mean it doesn't sound like you can actually do anything in there it's it's a bit of a squeeze until you get to the like sort of the bottom of it where it opens up into a natural more of a natural cave gotcha it doesn't smell bad or anything i mean it's it's pretty decent in there um yeah no it should be fine i say as i like cough and retch and spit up a bit <laughs> ah okay i mean if he says it's good lbj it's got to be good for you <laughs> yeah you've been traveling with me it should be good <laughs> Astrid, you believe this is like some fate or destiny or something? Yeah, I mean, we can't we can't leave these types of creatures attacking people. And and you you and I both know, we all know that there's nobody at the city who's could probably take care of this. Yeah, but I mean, are we able to get in there with our armor on? I mean, you, you just got a shimmy. Yeah. All right. This, I mean, this is worse when, when it comes to plan B and running than the first plan B and running. I'm just saying. But you're having to go through two separate bottlenecks to get away? <laughs> yeah. It sounds tough. <laughs> I mean, if you want to go first, I'll also push you while I wiggle through. If you I mean, need some help. I would rather be last um, and be pulled through. All right. Well, 
I mean, somebody has to go first if we're going to do this thing. Yeah, I thought you you would go since it's your destiny. Like, fate has brought you here. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I can do that. <laughs> I can definitely do that. Are you going to be able to see in there with that tiki torch? Um. Well, you know, I don't know. I've never gone climbing through a small hole in Playmail with a tiki torch before. <laughs> so I don't really know how great it's going to go. Um, Maybe Emerald I, should go first. But before that, how how sturdy or durable is the like the mesa that we're standing on? It's pretty uh, solid. Um, so it it's you know it it is it's not stone, right? It is earth, but it's it's above the waterline. Um, so where where you're standing, it is it, it's quite solid. It's it's hard packed. Uh, it's hard packed earth. I was just thinking of like securing a rope and then throwing it down the hole so that way you can use it to pull ourselves up. So you don't, there's, I mean, there's not really much to tie it to. You could try to tie it to one of the tiki torches, but your guess is that that is not going to hold the weight of, you know. No, I, I've got, I've got like iron spikes that I was oh. thinking of spiking in and securing the rope to that. Yeah, you 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 would surmise that um, spiking the ground and then tying uh, a rope to the to the spike would would be just fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'll do that first, and uh, then I guess I'll just start shimmying. As you drive the as you're driving the spike into the ground, mm -hmm. uh, you hear sort of the clicking and hissing. The sound begins to uh, the the sound begins to in increase. Um, it, it it gets louder, and it's starting to it it's an aggressive sounding uh it's an aggressive sounding <laughs> hissing and clicking now okay so i guess now we have another decision to make <laughs> that was i mean that sleep spell was my one spell um do we it, is it worth it at this point i thought you were good with a bow emerald maybe we just lure him out let's smoke him out of there <laughs> we'll just shoot him with our bow see who gets more hit points yeah, well, sure. Maybe Astrid can cheat and say she's got five more on a single hit next time. I mean, um, wouldn't it just be sort of like whack-a-mole for me and my hammer with them coming out of the hole? You could try. Right? And then you guys shoot the ones on the side? Yeah, every single one that you well, make up. So let me clarify. I just want to clarify. Uh, the sound is increasing, but it doesn't... It, I, I don't mean that to imply that it, it's getting closer. It, it, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it, it's just getting louder, right? So um, that sort of the, the whispered hissing and clicking is now, uh, you know, you can hear a much louder hissing and clicking. It still sounds like it's resonating from further deep in the burrow itself, but uh, it, it is louder. I, you get the sense, I'm going to metagame here for you, you get the sense that driving the spike into the mound was heard uh, and sort of reverberated in the mound itself, and uh, they're aware that you're doing something up top. Okay, but they're not advancing, so lack of it doesn't, sounds it like doesn't, it's out. It doesn't sound like it, yeah, yeah. All right, so back to, back to plan A. <laughs> All right. Get in the hole, Emerald. I'll make my way down. You guys, okay, you're, so you're going to send the only character who took damage down into the hole. Okay, that's The great. only one that so, can see I said I would go. I said I would go first. <laughs> I was so, willing to. I even had a plan on how you would crawl like that. So you know, with my the thought, torch. since we were outside, my thought was that sending the one who can see in the dark made the most sense because the light wouldn't alert the things down in the hole. I that's, agree. That, that's what I was thinking too. Plus, I only have two hit points left, so apparently that makes you invincible. <laughs> it does. I mean, that puts you on par with me. Yeah. So, so I got nothing to worry elite. about. <laughs> so you, so you make your, you know, you sort of you're shimmying down. I'm assuming you're going head first. Yep. Okay, so you sort of shimmy down um, to the bottom, and again, you see the burrow continues to the west. It's still roughly hewn, 24 to 26, looks like it was dug out of um, the earth. And, uh, you know, basically, as you approach, you're, you're sort of shimmying through that burrow, the smell becomes stronger and stronger, 
and the sound, uh, the hissing and clicking sound, um, is is very strong, and you can see movement, um, uh, you know, on the other side. Uh, so at where this opening is, is where it opens up into this larger chamber, you definitely see um, movement. It, it looks, uh, it's quite fast flashes of sort of scaly uh, reptilian skin. Um, it almost looks, appears to be writhing. You can't, so you really can't differentiate one being from the other. You just see this sort of mass of writhing reptilian skin. Well, that sounds like it should be fine. Um. <laughs> we're, so, we're so screwed. I don't know who thought this was a good idea. <laughs> so my backup character. Um... <laughs> Can he play both of those at the same time? <laughs> and it just happened at 11 to be in the PM, cave. Yeah. Rejoin us for a new session zero. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess in for a penny, in for a pound. I'm already making my way through. I'm assu- I'm hoping that there are people sort of following behind me as I'm. Yeah. So that's a the, good question. What is the rest he, of the party doing? No, the second his his feet are all the way in there. I mean, I'm just like just waiting for him to get far enough along so that I can go in there because there's, there's clearly concern that we're going to, you know, I need to get through this passageway as quickly as possible is my thought. So you are following behind. Is anyone going in after Astrid? Essentially you can get two characters into this, uh, you can get two characters into this burrow before the opening chamber. Um, so you'll have like two in the burrow and then two on deck. Uh, is anybody else planning on going in after Astrid? Is, are they having a, I mean, are they having to get like. Yes. They're, they're hands in, they're on all four, not even really all fours. They're kind of like army crawling on their belly through this, uh, through this, this burrow. Yes. So, so I mean, are they having a hard time? Yes, they absolutely are. Um, it is slow moving. Uh, you know, they're not getting stuck. I'll say that, but it is definitely slow moving. They're inching. Picture picture yourself trying to, you know, work your way through a furnace vent. Um, yeah, you like know, Bruce sort Willis of the, and Die Hard. Ex- Bruce Willis and Die Hard. That's exactly what it is. Some would but say with, the greatest Christmas but, movie ever. But with mud and muck and the overwhelming smell of rancid meat and and feces yeah yeah i would nudge lbj into the hole like go (laughs) man you're next i'm last remember i said this Uh, i guess so all right dave your fate really depends on this role so (laughs) if you i know i'm being i'm being 100 percent serious yeah no that's that's old that's old school D. &D. I'm, i'm i'm okay with that i'm already rolling my four or my 3d6 so here comes okay so you actually so you you have a surprise round at this point right your head comes out um basically you know you pop your head out what you see um before you is an open chamber uh it's it it looks to be even larger than the mound so you you know you feel like it's slightly it it, it's below the mound and goes wider than the mound it's about 40 feet from north to south and then where you're coming from east to west it's maybe 25 to 30 feet right and it's sort of semi-circular in the most northern corner um you can see it it appears to be some sort of nest uh it's it's made out of uh looks like it, it looks like a sort of nest compiled of old driftwood and um swamp grass uh but it it clearly appears to be some sort of nest perched on this nest are uh perched on this nest are three um beasts reptilian type beasts but they they appear to be smaller and by your guesstimation, they look—they appear to be female. Uh, and this was actually that writhing 
um, movement that that you were seeing, they're positioning. They're trying to position themselves around the nest. They're 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 clearly um, trying to block your way. Standing directly in front of them, you see a beast that stands at least a foot taller than any other beast that you've seen. Um, it, it, it's a massive, massive reptilian beast with it's, it's, it's muscular and um, standing almost defiantly uh, with one leg forward. It's standing um, with, uh, with it's with a, a blade. It's actually, this beast is actually carrying a blade. It has a short sword thrust forth and it has uh, 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 fashioned similar to uh, the type of trinkets that you had saw on the torches. It has a necklace with those types of trinkets, but um, it appears to be, it, it glints as if it's uh, precious metal. You can't really tell, um, you know, based on your information, the color of the metal, but it appears to be some type of precious metal. Um, and so, it is now your, you, this is your surprise round. This is what you've seen. You can now decide what you'd like to do. You can attack and get a free attack, and then we will roll initiative at the top of the order. You can jut yourself back into the burrow. Um, you could, I mean, there, it's your, you are basically getting a free round at this point. Ah, uh, decisions. Um, so this big guy looks like the only one that's actually you see, defensive. You see four, well, not that necessarily. The three females seem to be in, he seems to be the only one in an offensive, offensive um, yeah. posture. The three females seem to be in a defensive posture. Um, you can't, it is hard. You're not sure though. I guess what I'm saying is he's not, he's not really making any forward movement. Um, he is, uh, He's standing there defiantly. Yeah, I just, I feel like even if I go back in the hole, he can just follow. And does he look big enough to fit through the hole? You said he was kind of a big hulk and uh, compared he, to the others. He looks like, I mean, obviously he got into the hole. Your assumption would be that he can get out of the hole. And that's yeah. the other thing. Uh, these, these creatures are not wearing any armor at all. Uh, they have these thick scaly reptilian hides. They don't, they're not actually wearing any armor. Plus you do, you know, you did note when they were emerging earlier that they almost contort their bodies um, to be able to fit through smaller spaces. Yeah, that's that's gross and weird. I'm gonna attack it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> for the record, I just rolled up my stats from my backup character. So. Uh, he well, must have just wanted to well. finish doing that. To, yeah, well, he's gonna he's gonna make a good fighter, I think. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'll move up and uh, take a swing. Uh, there's enough room or clearance for me to swing two handed, or like like a. Uh, yes. Yeah, I'll give it to you. You can swing. You can certainly swing two-handed, but here's the thing, right? When you use your weapon two-handed, you lose initiative automatically. Any two-handed, any two-handed weapon okay. always loses initiative. I'll, I'll swing one-handed then for now. Uh, okay. So then, um, give me an initiative roll. Initiative or the attack roll for surprise? Uh, oh, you're taking, you're taking the attack on this. Okay. I got yeah. it. Got it. Got it. Yep, okay. Yep. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll swing two-handed for this first one because he's caught off guard. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Uh, oh, that's a 19 on the die, so that hits armor class zero. That is absolutely a hit. Okay. Uh, so then a D8 plus one. This is where I need a good roll. Oh, seven damage. Okay. Um, so you bring your bastard sword down, but uh, it... It's more like swinging straight across. Exactly. Of, yeah. So, so your 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 field of movement is sort of restricted. Um, your blade does strike true, uh, but he does not seem bothered by it. Um, in, in other words, he sort of takes it in stride and and just <laughs> hisses and clicks in your face as he takes the damage. Oh, I have some regrets. <laughs> <laughs> regrets were made or regrets were had mistakes but, were made yeah yeah right 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 um and as you strike 
uh, as you strike him, the three female reptilian beasts uh, also scream um, uh, defiantly uh, with sort of that hissing uh, and clicking noise. And um, they sort of repostures of repostures themselves jockey uh to to sort of block this this nest um astrid you can enter the cave uh you're you're not going to be able to attack um uh on this round unless you win initiative what i'm because now we're we're sort of we're top of the order lbj and okay. um lbj and uh and sloppy are basically not in this you are coming through um but this creature essentially now we're top of the order if you get initiative if you win initiative i'm going to say that you will be able to emerge and attack if you do not have initiative um you'll be able to emerge you will not be able to attack and and you know emeralds basically gonna take the brunt of it so so roll well dave is what i'm saying oh great no no pressure right <laughs> Uh, D6? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, and your dex modifier okay. is. Okay, so I rolled a six. My dex modifier is zero, so I got six. Perfect. You, uh, it's, it, that's, it's all you? Okay. Um, I guess I'll, so I'll swing, I guess, one-handed now. Okay. Uh, that hits armor class four. Um... Wait, I just want to check. Hold on. Nine sorry. through four. I think he might be better than. Okay. Uh, so your your blade strikes true again. Okay. Uh, yep. Yeah, so I just basically reverse grip, swing back across, and that is four points of damage. Okay. So you you hit him, um, and he. You definitely get a reaction this time. You can you can see fear in his eyes for the first time. His uh, sort of glowing yellow eyes uh, flicker, and he split second sort of looks back at the uh, at the other three uh, creatures that are standing there, um, almost remorsefully. Uh, and uh, so before he before he comes back at you, Astrid, you will be able to attack this round. Perfect. Um, ooh, that is a six. Uh, you rolled a six or you can hit? No, him? that's okay. armor class six. Okay, so you go, to, you know, seeing, um, coming forth and seeing this, this massive uh, chaos in front of you, right? Um, Emerald being... Uh, in hand to hand with this massive beast and then these three screaming clicking hissing um other reptilian beasts behind them you swing your warhammer but uh go just wide it sort of glances off of his shoulder and doesn't strike true um and that brings us to him and real check. okay so you did yeah so <laughs> So he is, uh, he is not, uh, he's not too happy. He's not in the mood to chit chat or to negotiate. Um, so Emerald, as you, you know, you brought your sword around as it, as it connected, he comes across, uh, with his, um, with his left hand. Uh, that's a 15. What, uh, what is your AC buddy? Uh, my arm class is four. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, like, I'm sorry, um, but uh, that is, uh, and he does four points of damage. So he comes around with his left and just sort of rips right into your throat. Yeah, that, that would have killed me from full anyway. So, all right, I'll just uh, sit quietly and work <laughs> on my next character. So, so Astrid. Um, yes, we got our first death. 
So, so Astrid, you're welcome. You, it was you, session two. Okay. So Astrid, you see this massive uh, reptilian beast who actually looks. You, he, you can see two massive um, sort of sword wounds where this black brackish blood is is spewing forth. Um, brings his left uh, his left hand around with these four inch hooked yellow claws that that look almost like meat hooks and literally rip uh emerald's esophagus right out of his throat uh, you know, essentially just removes his entire esophagus and emerald um emerald drops in a in a bloody gray mess um and and that brings us again to the top of the order and we're going to roll for initiative and now and keep in mind astrid you are now the only person in this pearl with four beings, one of which is maddened with, uh, you know, pain and anger. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling real good about this, you guys. Right. <laughs> if it's wounded, it might not chase after you. So now here's what else. See, this is what I'm, I'm just going to give. I want to lay out your options so that you know your options that are available, right? We're going to roll for initiative, right? If you want to retreat, you ha you you got to declare it right if you want you quite frankly you can't do a fighting withdrawal because your back is literally to the wall you can't yeah. do a fighting oh, withdrawal no. through the burrow so your your options are in. this astrid can either <laughs> astrid can either attack right or astrid can try to retreat but you have to you have to declare before we roll initiative i I'm not running away. Okay, that's good enough for me. I, I like your moxie, kid. All right, so... Uh, Astrid is on a mission to rid the world of beings just like this. I hear I hear you. So give me a D6 roll with your dex modifier. That is a three. So I rolled a two. So you are... Uh, you, you, you basically get to act first. All right. Let's see how this goes. Um, and does, ask, and th th you thankful, thank Emeril. Um, he does look, again, I will say he looks bloodied. He's not, uh, he's definitely, um, he's definitely hurt. The second attack, um, uh, you know, hurt him. Yeah. Um, so, so Astrid seeing her, you know, beloved friend fall near her, her traveling companion, um, like pull, like pulls back her warhammer and just is gonna try and clobber this thing. Like she's not even avoiding its nose, okay? Because she is so she's so upset about this, and that is probably not gonna work out well for me. That is <laughs> a six. <laughs> Uh, that, yeah, that's, uh, that absolutely. So you, again, seeing so, Emerald, seeing Emerald's throat ripped from his, uh, throat, you're sort of aghast and taken aback and throw up a little bit in the back of your throat. And so as you go to swing your hammer, um, it again goes wide. It glances off of, uh, again, it sort of glances off of his shoulder. And he, as you uh, go to attack him he brings his right arm around uh and oh that's not okay so um and rolls a four so uh he goes to bring his right arm around uh and it, 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 it trips a little bit over emerald as he's coming forward and he misses and goes wide we are now at the top of the order um has anyone else come through this burrow no right lbj you are i mean i'm yeah, I'm making my way down. She said uh, she would help he me, right, you know. Yeah, he said. Yeah, he would be have right been right her. behind me. So. Okay, so then, okay, and so I'm then. behind him. Right, so then, okay, so at this point now, we're going to roll initiative. Again, if you win initiative, LBJ will emerge from the hole and he will be able to attack. If you lose initiative, LBJ will emerge from the hole, but he will not be able to attack. Okay. okay. All right, let's do this. Need a one. I mean, I got a two. Well, there you go. So, um, okay. So, okay. Uh, your, your attack. All right. Um, that is a armor class zero. That is definitely a hit. Um, 
that is two points of damage. This is the least amount of damage I can do. So he do. takes. So he takes. He takes the hammer blow and it stuns him for a second, but he is still not down. Um, he looks very bloody. Like you basically kind of caved in the side of his skull at this point, but he's still standing and you get the feeling that, um, you know, he's going to go down swinging. He's, he's not surrendering at this point. Um, and he's uh, fighting almost um, as if, you know, he's fighting not even for himself. You get the feeling that he's fighting for uh those that are standing behind him, right? Um, yeah. Astrid so... was feeling really good about that hit, but, you know, <laughs> that foot kind of slipped a little bit on uh, Emerald's bloody pool next to me. So, uh, so sorry about that. <laughs> so, LBJ, you are emerged and you can close distance and melee at this point. Um, Do I know? Does he notice me? Uh, he, so yes, I mean, he's noticing, he, he notices, he can see well in the dark. You're, okay, assu okay. you're assuming from his yellow eyes that, yeah. uh, that he's, yeah. And, and I mean, basically he's standing right, you're standing, you okay. emerge from a hole where he's standing. Right. So he's not turned aside. Of. Okay. Okay. Right. 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 <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah. Close the distance and attack this dude. Okay. Big money. Natural 20. Wow. Wow. Okay. 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 Now we're talking. <clears throat> so that is, um, you're doubling across the board, right? So like whatever you're, you're, so in other words, whatever your dice roll is, you're doubling, then you're adding modifier. Okay. That's easy. There's no modifier. I rolled four damage. So that'd be double that. So eight. So eight plus, okay. and then add your, oh, no modifier at all. No modifier. No. All right. So tell us what that looks like. So, uh, I, come come out of this hole and I see the yellow eyes and I just charge forward till I hear a, a nasty gushing sound and it just clicks no more. <laughs> that clicking's driving me crazy. <laughs> and so um the this this reptilian beast uh falls forward um, on top of uh, Emerald. Emerald, Emerald, and this this reptilian beast are now laying in the center of the floor. The three uh, remaining sort of reptilian beasts are are now they're sort of cowering back into the nest, um, and and they're not taking their eyes off of you. They're watching you in, in intent intently, but they're not they have they're not moving. They're not making a sound. They're just sort of like. They're all, like huddled together, all three of them, um, in, in the center of this nest. Did uh, Sherman make it through the hole yet? Yes, Sherman is now in the. Uh, you, you're essentially uh, uh, Sherman is is now in the the Sherman is now in the the cavern, and um, we are out of initiative order we're more in encounter order at this point okay right all right i mean what do we see so if we look past these um creatures in the nest are there what i'm expecting is like eggs or some sort of like i'm thinking maybe they're protecting some type of child or small creature or something like that so behind so you behind what you do see is sort of that writhing reptilian skin behind the three uh what you would assume to be female reptilian beasts um you really don't you can't count there's no way to get a number there's there's sort of just writhing reptilian skin um it looks to be it could be three it could be five it could be ten um sort of beaver sized um little reptilian beings that are uh, uh, you know huddling together and kind of um just writhing around in the the center of the the nest Astrid will look over at Sherman and LBJ and say, "What do you What do you want to do? What do you want to do with them?" It's three more noses.
right? Do, LBJ? I mean, yeah, we could burn it. The nest. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what happened to Emerald over here? I kind of like go over. He's dead. With my boot, <laughs> oh like, right. Still moving. Like, Sherman this is didn't a even bad idea, Emerald. Sh- Sherman didn't even know. Yeah. Uh, so Sherman, as you emerge, right, you see a massive, bloodied reptilian beast, um, and Emerald with just his ro- throat ripped out. Yeah, that's a bummer. What does Emerald have on him? <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> so I while, have... he's, while he's picking the packets of our deceased comrade. No, I was just like, is there anything that stands out? Uh, I had short bow with 40 arrows. Okay, I'll take some arrows. <laughs> uh, a, and a bastard sword, um, mm. which you can use one or two handed. Mm. Uh, banded mail, which is worse than what you're wearing. And then. The other stuff is just kind of basic, like backpack, quiver, um, small hammer, some iron spikes. So as you, as you're looting your companion, I mean, I wasn't corpse, down like going through his stuff. I mean, I was like just and debating him. whether you should kill children. Um, uh, oh, I didn't know it was one children. Of the, I thought it was just the one like, of females. the one of the the female reptilian beasts um, tosses a sack uh towards you at the you know basically tosses a sack out from the nest and then um and then cowers back again and you can hear the clink of coins within the sack <laughs> if they should have just led with that and this would have you know not been so bad <laughs> i you know i don't know if they're the i do we think they're the creatures that have been attacking the people on the road like if so we don't kill them, are they going to attack people? Or so here, here's what you see in the rest of the cavern. Now that um, uh, you know, well, actually, you don't see anything um, uh, unless somebody lights. Unless somebody no, we have tiki torch. torches. I t- okay. I brought yeah, the, tiki the tiki torch. torch. Okay. Yeah. So what what you you know what you can see in here? You see um, three what appear to be uh, deer, antelope, that sort of thing, uh, carcasses in various states of decay. Uh, it looks like they've been feeding off of them for a while. None of, them look, none, none of them look fresh. And, you you know, that's sort of where that rotten meat smell is coming from. So you see those three. Um, you do see uh, one wooden crate, uh, but that is the only, like, everything else sort of looks natural what i mean is um they appear to live more like beasts than men they they don't appear to have uh they don't they're they don't appear to to build anything they're again they're sort of nesting um and this appears to be their burrow like that they they've sort of dug out of the ground guys maybe we should just like leave them alone i don't think these are the creatures we're looking for. Uh, I will grab Emerald's bag and drag it out through the hole with me. Okay. So what was the big guy wearing? The So um, LBJ, you're looking at the, he has a, it is, it's a necklace. Um, it, it, it appears to be uh, silver. Um, it's, it's, roughly hewn kind of it has the same so it it's sort of like silver nuggets that are carved roughly carved into that same kind of dragon's head or 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 lizard head uh shape basically strung on a piece of twine so i'm gonna take that necklace off and put it on okay so um you take the necklace off and uh, you take the necklace off and you, you know, you put it on. As you put the necklace on, um, the the three sort of um, you know, what you would have termed to be female reptilian beasts kind of 
prostrate themselves to you, right? Uh, they they're they're sort of kneeling and they're they're and they're they're bowing at this point. So so Astrid, who was heading for the burrow, looks back to see the reptilians bowing. To right, yes. Keep what you kill. <laughs> so I walk over. I pick up the bag of gold. If anybody had, I mean, I'm I'm, assu- I'm assuming it's coins or whatever. Pick up the bag they threw. Yeah, you you hear the you can hear distinctly the clink of coins when it was tossed. Yeah, so when it hit the ground, it, there was a distinct uh, clink of coins. Okay. You know, I pick up the bag. More! <laughs> Take the bag out. What are the rest of you doing? I'm So I'm assuming I got out of the hole and everything. And uh, I will now probably... Uh, I will not go through Emerald's belongings. I will just hold on to them. In case, I don't know, we come across a new adventure at some point. <laughs> who might want some of this stuff. <laughs> I'll yell back, LBJ! Astrid, make sure you get the sword. Um, Astrid had climbed into the the burrow while LBJ was being worshipped, so um, she's already heading out. Okay. Um, so who was the first out of the burrow? Me. My okay. dad. <laughs> so um so as you emerge as uh sherman as you as you're emerging from the burrow you uh hear human voices um it sounds like it's coming north uh it's human voices from uh from the road where Across where'd the they go over here yeah on the other side of the river from the road mm. it sounds like they're looking for us it sounds like they're looking for something. Uh, I'll, I'll kind of talk normally into the hole. Uh, guys, there's people coming. I don't know if they're friendlies or what. So hurry up. And I'll draw my bow and take a defensive position. I got noses. <laughs> what? <laughs> we, just, we just dealt with some lizard creatures. What are you talking about? Some people out here. Hurry up. I'll move through the burrow warp speed. So um, LBJ and uh, Astrid, you emerge, you emerge from the burrow and you can, uh, you can hear the the voices as well. And in fact, in fact, just as, just as you are um, emerging from the burrow up that the ramp that uh, is on the opposite side of the, uh, um, on the opposite side of the mesa, um, you see uh, four leather-clad. Um, they appear to be, you know, cutters. They appear to be uh, men with swords, um, sort of coming up the coming up the mesa, and um, they see you and are you know see you emerging from the hole and uh they're a bit taken aback uh they they kind of the first guy stops and the other two um sort of bump into him and uh they draw uh they draw their long swords from their they draw their long swords from their their sheaths if if it helps my other characters ready <laughs> I, sh- I show them my necklace proper bow <laughs> So LBJ, <laughs> so these three characters who, you know, they, they look rough, look to be mercenaries perhaps, um, draw their, their long swords and LBJ, uh, LBJ shows them the necklace that says proper bow and that's where we end for this week. <laughs> <laughs> they better be bowing when we start the game. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That was good. Oh my gosh. 
So hopefully the the stream came I, out okay. I know it was I, having some issues for some of the viewers, but also I, I Dave, I'm sorry, but I also don't take any responsibility for that. Your party is the one that sent the injured person first. So, <laughs> I no, said that's, that's, no, 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 no. To be I honest, said, to be honest, I, said I would that, go first. That's that's you winning that surprise roll. I actually kind of saved you because if they would have gotten first attack, um, the three females would not have protected the nest. All four would have attacked, you know, this person emerging from the hole and you, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have made it anyway. I was hoping the surprise was going to um, carry you through, but unfortunately I, I don't take responsibility for that. No, that, that that's okay. My, the, my next, the, the character that I have that I just made up is a lot more survivable. <laughs> so he's, he's basically just going to be like a tin can with a ton of hit points. He, he's nice. a lot more. He's a lot more yeah. live worthy. Yeah. Yeah. I rolled. I, I rolled mean, max for my for my HP, and I actually have a bonus to my con. So nice. Perfect. Nice. Yeah. Because so far, um, I'm the tank, and that's kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> How much HP do you got? Uh, Five. Oh, sorry. Oh, you got oh. five. Oh, okay. I got five. I got How six. much do you have? Six. Oh, okay. Sherman's got two, and I uh, like he. I'm holding I can't it down. Believe, I know you really <laughs> are, man. Good for you. Yeah, be, be careful because two is not quite as invincible as I once thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have a minor, a strong two. See, I, no. I made it very clear. Minor, a strong two. <laughs> that's oh, why that's I'm still the difference alive. then. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, all right, so uh, we'll, what we'll do is uh, we'll go around if everyone wants to plug their stuff, and then uh, we'll sign off. Uh, starting with the Dungeon Master himself. Uh, so much like last time, uh, I am still Bill from Roll Stats. I'm still, you know, working 16 hours a day, and uh, I will be here not this Tuesday, but next Tuesday for session three of B2 Keep on the Borderlands, where hopefully. Um, I get to kill someone else. So, <laughs> <laughs> not it. Not it. <laughs> I mean, we know it's not going to be me. That it was it's fun. Be Jake. Okay, so here's what I'll say. First of all, first of all, it was fun. Second of all, like that was that was a good death. You, <laughs> quite frankly, no, I'm serious. Quite frankly, you you did a lot of damage to that creature. If 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 it weren't for LBJ's, you know, sort of crit and your two solid hits, yeah. more people could have gone down, right? Like, I mean, that is sort of the worst situation. That is a one at a time. One person comes through, they get, they're basically attacked. One person. Oh, no, my, my, my character died a hero. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it was, it, that was a good death. Or that was absolutely He died good the death. character that took us on the wrong path along the river. <laughs> Honestly, Astrid, <laughs> Astrid really owes her life to Emerald. So, yes, yes. <laughs> <clears throat> awesome uh paula um i am paula and i don't know dude <laughs> we did this at the beginning right all right, all right so you, don't have to. you don't have to i'm just you know what <laughs> tell us what you're painting. no i'm wow. gonna tell it i'm gonna oh tomorrow what am i painting yeah, yeah what oh, are you painting that's what's over there <laughs> a lot <laughs> a like lot. was there was there stuff i was there's partially nothing on the handle with? i don't know oh i don't know that's scary i think i have to finish that sort of zorn like is that what that was yeah like a creature but i sort of painted it like the, creature. the sci-fi version looks like an alien we'll go with that the sci-fi aquatic version <laughs> you know of that, right. I think that my five-year-old made a special request about a small fighter with a dragon head. So we'll see. Maybe I will paint that tomorrow. There you go. Um, you know, and then I'll be on here on Friday and on Saturday. Yup. Oh, I, hey, I forgot to say one thing. Can I, and I, I'm sorry, yeah, I, I'm cutting you off, Paul. I, I apologize. Oh, no, you're fine. Uh, I on Thursday I will be here playing Stanley Kowalski, uh, who <laughs> it's it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a good time. You guys are gonna love Stash. So uh, yeah, yeah, I'll be here Thursday. Yeah, I don't so, know who I'm making yet for that game. Friday we're playing Pathfinder, correct? 
Yup. Do you even know what you're playing for that? In which I am playing, yes, I am playing a fortune teller. Oh, that's right. A half elf, right? Yes. Um, I, you know. You went exciting with your ancestry. Hold did you please. actually roll up your character already, Paula? Or, I yeah, mean, we did it. Hold, nice. please. I thought you yes, waited. I am an, an I thought you waited until Friday morning to roll up your character. No, we did a session zero. It was recorded. <laughs> Didn't you watch the video? I work 16 hours a day. No, I did not watch So I am playing an elven swashbuckler fortune teller named Madame Muriel. Nice. So that should be exciting. And then I am playing a Black Rack Adventurers, right, on Saturday? Yeah. She and in plays that, the, the Peter I, of that group. I am playing, <laughs> yes. I just kill things and say like, nothing like crazy crazy and grunts crazy <laughs> rock chickens yeah yes. right <laughs> yep pretty the much gray chickens yeah that's right. how it goes so it's an it's an exciting adventure it's gonna be fun uh draven yeah so uh just have some other uh pathfinder 2e and i've got uh gonna be working on t- either tonight or tomorrow on my Tasha's Cauldron of Everything review video. Um, I've seen some other, interesting ones. I haven't watched them yet, but I've seen some interesting titles. Yeah, it's it's a mixed bag, I think. Um, yeah. There's some things I like about it. There's some things that I don't particularly care for. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's just you know the way those things tend to go. And you guys are uh, going to have to go watch it if you want to know what he thinks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and uh, barring any sort of other catastrophes, I should be part of the Friday Pathfinder game on this channel as well. Yeah, I think uh, you're the only tank. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's that's fine. <laughs> I'll be playing uh, Durgan uh, Mornward, who's a uh, half orc paladin, former gladiator, um, exhibition gladiator. So kind of like the Galarian equivalent of pro wrestling. I love it. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then on the weekend, just a few private games that I'm running that hopefully Bill will be a part of both of those as well. So, so you uh, just so you know, like lightning can't strike twice, Dave. So you died today. Juice can't kill you on Friday. Just That's so true. You know, I, like I, yeah, I'm, right. I'm, I'm I'm immune now. Right, right. I right. don't know. It might go much. It might go a lot like tonight. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't know the system, so it might even be worse. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can All help right. you with that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that, that, that's my stuff. That's cool. Uh, BN Drake. Uh, yeah. Uh, the last couple of videos for the final campaign should be up soon. Uh, if you want to know what the, the players on the Thursday game may or may not encounter, you can just watch the last hour or so because I uh, kind of gave away a lot of hints. And uh, we start Pulp Cthulhu Session Zero on Thursday on this channel. And we're going to light that dumpster fire right. So <laughs> it should be pretty interesting. And I've got uh, another campaign starting on Sunday, which is Stars Without Number. A uh, couple, one new player is coming back who played in uh, a couple of 5e campaigns. So oh, cool. it should be interesting. Awesome. Uh, and yes, we have, again, mini painting tomorrow, Pulp Cthulhu Thursday, Pathfinder Friday, Saturday, 5e, and then Sunday, I will be streaming over on Twitch uh, some Dragon Age Inquisition. So I've been playing that a little more. Uh, Pat, the Pathfinder Kingmaker video game, just I, I'm worried because it keeps crashing on me. So I'm just going to wait. Hopefully a patch will come out in the next few days and I'll go, okay, I'm going to play it again. So, uh, But we'll see. Uh, but yeah, so that was it, guys. We'll be back in two weeks on the same exact night, same exact time. Uh, so be sure to hit subscribe, and we will see you guys then. Game on. <laughs>